Fate is so cruel. It takes and it destroys and it makes folks all sad and upset, but it can't ruin everything. Sometimes folks are able to pull a fast one on fate, juke through all the random stuff it throws at them and then make it out the other end alive. Usually very seriously wounded, but alive. These are some of the folks that made it. The top five horror characters that managed to escape their fate. Let's get it. Coming in at number five, we've got Grace from Ready or Not. Old money makes for a family full of whack jobs, wouldn't you agree? If you've somehow held onto a family mansion for generations, you're guaranteed to see some really f***ed up sh go down within those ancient walls. And when you're old enough, you'll be able to participate in that f***ed up sh just like daddy taught ya. So when new, less ludicrously wealthy folks show up, it often takes them a little while to adjust, and sometimes they can't adjust. And at times, they just get sacrificed in some weird blood ritual that's supposed to keep the money flowing. Usually that fate is reserved for the folks working in the factories or digging up minerals in the mines, but in Ready or Not, the gruesome, well-moneyed fate was thrust upon Grace. Poor, poor Grace. She met the love of her life and experienced the whirlwind romance everybody dreams of, but in the end, she draws the wrong card and finds her life on the line immediately after her lavish wedding. Doesn't even get time to rest up after a long day of wearing heels, my word. So thanks to the curse, or blessing, or whatever the hell mystical nonsense the Ladomas family's mysterious benefactor left behind, Grace now has to play a game of hide and seek for her life with a family of rich, spoiled lunatics. And really, there's no reason for Grace to survive if the family gets their shit together. But can they get their shit together? No! After coming close over and over again, they consistently let her escape by the skin of her teeth, usually thanks to some petty bickering. Accidental deaths, goofy suicides, and plenty of crossed wires allow Grace to continue running and hiding, eventually managing to hop in a car and make it off the property. Modern tech foils her plans, though, as the family reports the car stolen and remotely shuts it down. But somehow, she manages to avoid death once more as her spouse poisons his family to give her a fighting chance. Even better, the fighting this inspires in the family actually gives Grace more time, who then realizes the sun has risen, so she survived the night. What happens now? Surely the family can still kill her, right? But fate has other plans today. Because she made it to the very end, Grace witnesses the entire Ladomas family turn into fountains of blood. Lebeo's spirit came to collect following their failure and did so in spectacular fashion. Coming in at number 4, we've got Mia from Evil Dead 2013. Speaking of blood showers, who would have thought Mia would make it to the end of this one? Veering off the path of the original Evil Dead, Fede Alvarez's version focuses on Mia, who is attempting to recover from her drug addiction. With her are a bunch of friends and her darling brother David. At first, everything seems fine at their creepy cabin in the woods, but after discovering the Naturam de Monto, things get weird. Mia sees things she shouldn't and her pals assume it has to do with her drug problem, but really it's some supernatural danger coming out to play. Mia gets possessed, which should be a death sentence, but just you wait. First, we've got some more blood and gore to deal with. After a burning hot shower and a failed trip to the hospital, Mia shoots a friend, vomits on another, and passes the possession on. At that point, things are looking rough. Demons are claiming that Mia no longer exists, implying that they've completely taken over. And there isn't really any evidence to the contrary either. The Taker of Souls is well on its way to collect five souls and release the Abomination. David learns that Mia must be purified by live burial, bodily dismemberment, or incineration. The other friends are purified in pretty raunchy ways, but somehow Mia remains. Instead of burning her in the cabin like he originally planned, David decides to bury her. And after she dies underground, he digs her up and tries to resuscitate her. This is successful in the end and purges the demon from her body. But that doesn't stop the abomination from rising. As blood rains down from the sky, Mia has two choices. Die and accept her fate, or rev a chainsaw and slice the f in half. Now what do you think the better choice is? Groovy. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps us out with the algorithm. On with the list. Coming in at number three, we've got Lionel Cotsgrove from Brain Dead slash Dead Alive. I'm always confused as to how I'm supposed to address this movie. I know that Brain Dead was the original title that Peter Jackson went with, but I heard about it first as Dead Alive. Let me know what you call it down in the comments and we'll see if there's a consensus. Right, the point of the list. So Lionel sealed his fate when he decided to keep his dead zombified mother hidden away in the basement. Instead of contacting the proper authorities or performing some sort of matricide mercy kill, he thinks that everything will be okay if he just shoulders this burden in secret. Lame brain thinking, Lionel. That's the kind of plan that leads to your zombified mother getting hit by a tram and mistaken for a normal corpse. And then you have to go to the funeral and attempt to tranquilize the body in the coffin. And then when you visit the graveyard later, you witness a bunch of hoodlums getting attacked by your zombie mom. And then the kung fu fighting priest shows up and kicks 
Jesus, but then he also becomes a zombie. And then the priest and the nurse have zombie relations, resulting in a zombie baby. And then you have to chase the baby through the park because it causes all sorts of trouble. And then your bag uncle finds out about your hidden zombie secret and then takes all your stuff under threat of exposure. But then the party he throws is a disaster because the zombies get out and the party guests get infected. So then you have to take out the lawnmower and turn them into bloody pudding. And at no point did Lionel really come all that close to any danger. Like, how did he manage to avoid becoming a zombie during all this? Well, probably thanks to the good luck charm his girlfriend gave him. But even that can't protect him from the all encompassing love for his newly transformed formed undead mother. He's a mama's boy. His fate is inside mama's undead womb. But the lucky pendant comes clutch once again, saving Lionel from a fate worse than death. Reverse birth. Classic Lionel. Coming in at number two, we've got Charlie from 31. Oh, Rob Zombie, you sure know how to make a torturous horror movie. And of course, Sherry Moon Zombie plays a big role and manages to make it to the end. An artist needs a muse after all. We get it. 31 is a fascinating little number, sandwiched between Firefly family releases and the first set of Halloween remakes. And it's got all the Rob Zombie hallmarks, too. Clowns, carnies, baby-voiced killer ladies, underground mazes full of corpses, the works. But unlike his tendencies from the Firefly trilogy, the bad guys don't totally win this time. And the victim seems to get away. And that victim is Charlie, Carney extraordinaire. After getting dragged off the road in the middle of the night, she and her group of traveling pals find themselves in a game of life and death, proctored by a trio of powdered wig wearing wannabe aristocrats. The name of the game? 31. The goal? Survive against these clowns, while pompous people above make bets. Nobody's ever survived the game of 31 before, so it was a foregone conclusion that the Carney crew would die, but not Charlie. She somehow sticks it out to the very end, shocking and disturbing all present. But the posh folks at the top think that rules are rules, so off Charlie goes to walk along the desert road in broad daylight. She escaped the fate that all folks playing 31 resigned themselves to. Well, at least until Doomhead chases her down for an extrajudicial brawl, but we don't know who wins or loses. Maybe Charlie kept her fate-defying streak alive. And coming in at number one, we've got Laurie Strode from the Halloween series. Right, so this one's gonna be a little weird. Laurie Strode stands out among the many, many final girls from the iconic slashes of the 80s because she lasts for quite a while. Nancy goes down in Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and Alice survives until the second Friday the 13th, but Laurie manages to stick it out until Halloween Resurrection 2002. Good for her. But she goes down anyways, you know? She was always gonna get killed by Michael. It did indeed seem written in the stars. But you can't keep Jamie Lee Curtis down. Mm -mm. She mustered all of her final girl powers and defied the canon itself retconning all the movies that came after the OG Halloween and returning as a haggard, paranoid old survivalist in Halloween 2018. And guess what? She survives this one. Takes a knife to the abdomen and falls from the second story, but she survives. I suppose we'll see next Halloween if fate does indeed come for her again, but for now she seems to be doing all right. Who else can say they rewrote history and prevented their own death? Hardcore. Only the gnarliest of the gnarly can escape fate, and here we have five folks who managed it. What'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Who is the best fate escaper in horror history? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more macabre ones from the top five worst decisions made in horror movies. Jexer says, perhaps the single worst decision made with Michael Myers, teaching him how to drive. I mean, cars are pretty intuitive once you get going, but yeah, how do you manage that? Zagzilla1 says all situations where being paranoid and antisocial will save your life, which means I would make it out every time. Jesse Holland says, I hate most the movies and most the music from the 2000s, but this channel covers a lot, so it opens up all the movies I could try out that look okay. Keep your mind open, there's plenty of good stuff out there. Kumo Rock says, random movies no one heard odd. Epic fail. Damn, you got us. We're shutting down the channel. It's over. We failed. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to play Cyberpunk on my GameCube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. We're good. <laughs> Sometimes folks are able to pull a fast one on fate. Juke through all the random stuff it throws at them, and then make it out <sighs> the other end alive. Of course, it's at two and not three, and therefore throwing my pacing off. The top five horror characters that managed to escape their fate. Let's get it. Let's get it. Say, yeah, what? So, thanks to the curse or blessing or whatever the hell mystical nonsense, nope. Well, nonsense, the Ladomas family, Mila. Oh my goodness, why did I write this sentence, man? Why'd I do that? Mystical nonsense, the Ladomas family, Mila. Boom, baby! Why can't I get this? The Ladomas family's mysterious benefactor. 
Because she made it to the very end, Grace witnesses the entire Ladomas. Oh my goodness gracious. Coming in at number four, we've got Mia from the Evil Dead. Nope. Ooh. <laughs> how many messages do you need to send? <laughs> like, how did he avoid. Like, how did he avoid. Like, like, how did he avoid. How did he avoid. How did I. How can I speak English? I drink too much coffee. But the lucky pendant comes clear. 